Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a space station. First all you want to do is remove the entitled default cube, then press F3 to bring up the search window because drop down windows are for donut makers, then type start generation procedure and voila you're a pro. Ok I'm joking, but yes, with this video I am releasing my newest generation tool which is of course for building space stations. It does exactly what it says in the title, and just like the mech generator, there is a free and a paid version available to download from the links in the description. This means that everyone can play around with the script to see how it works. Just to explain the differences between the versions before we jump into it, the paid version includes a commented version of the script, a text-based configuration system that lets you easily modify the parameters of the generator, a whole suite of artwork that greatly increases the variety of the results, and access to any future content updates. In the free version of the tool, the code is not commented, there is no text-based configuration system, the variety of pieces is very limited, and you will not get access to any future updates. There's enough artwork to make the generator completely functional, but not enough to produce really interesting results. The procedure behind the free and the paid version is exactly the same, meaning that anyone with the right knowledge can use it to build their own versions of the generator. So feel free to download the free version below to see how everything works, and if you feel like you want the extra functionality and artwork, then consider picking up a copy of the paid version. What I'm going to do for the rest of the video is just show you how everything works and how to start using the script. I will be using the paid version to demonstrate this functionality. This is what it will look like when you open the blend file. The first thing you want to do is go to the text editor window, then click text and choose run script. This will register the classes with Blender and allow you to run the procedure. Keep in mind that you will need to run this script every time you open the file. To call the procedure you can press F3 to bring up the search window and look for start generation procedure. Alternatively to run the operation from the Python console, type in bpy.ops.object.gentools underscore start underscore generation with the open and close brackets, then press enter. The objects created from the procedure will be placed in the collection called generator result. When calling the operation it will delete any pre-existing objects inside of this collection, so make sure to remove anything from here that you want to keep. The way this generator works is a bit different from the other generation tools I've made, where in the mech generator individual objects that have position references will tell the next object where to go. In this generator a virtual three dimensional grid is grown and populated from a series of branches. When a branch is created alternative branches have a random chance of growing from them and this can lead to some cool structures. Branches can turn around and reconnect with pre-existing branches. Because the system knows where cells in the grid already exist, reconnecting branches do not create overlapping issues. With the paid version of the generator, you can use this config system to change the parameters of the generation process. For example we have max modules, which is the maximum number of modules the station can have, branch min, which is the minimum length an individual branch can be, branch max, which is the maximum length a branch can be, chance level, this is a percentage chance that any module in a branch will be split into a new one, Allow spin, this will enable a random 90 degree spin on straight modules. Move offset, you can think of this as the size of a cell in the virtual grid. I would not recommend changing this unless you know exactly what you're doing. By default this generator has been built for 2x2 two two meter cells using Blender's measurement system. When it comes to adding new pieces to the generator you need to make sure they are placed in the right collections. Taking a look here you can see that there are 9 categories of modules that are required to get the generator working correctly. Each of them represents a different kind of connection or junction to surrounding cells. You can compare this to a tileset system in video games with procedurally generated levels. Each of these junctions has a specific base orientation that needs to be consistent between each of the variations. This means that if you wanted to make a new T-junction piece, you would need to make sure that the object is placed in this orientation, and that its rotational values have been reset to zero, which you can do by pressing Ctrl plus A and choosing rotation. Make sure to unhide the pre-made objects in the file to see which way they are supposed to be oriented. The origins of the object must also be set to the center of the cell. I'll demonstrate what I mean by this. If you go to the bottom of the outliner you will see a hidden collection called module templates. If you make this visible you will see a wireframe cube surrounded by axis indicators. You can use this to plan out the orientation of your parts. If I unhide one of the module pieces such as a straight section you can see that it sits perfectly inside of this cell. Clicking on the object shows that its origin is placed directly in the center of the cell which also happens to be the world origin. This version of the generator has been designed to allow simple straight pieces to have extension details that extrude into neighboring cells. A problem with this is that it can cause overlapping issues if you have a situation where two nearby branches are using straight pieces with extruding details. To compensate for this, the generator avoids using straight pieces with extrusions when those pieces are next to junctions. But how does the system know which straight pieces have extrusions and which do not? Well the answer is, you tell it. If you take a look at where the straight module pieces are contained inside of the outliner, you can see that some of the pieces have the ext underscore prefix, which tells the generator that this object has some extruding details and that it should be avoided near junctions. Keep in mind that the overlap detection is not perfect, and in rare circumstances you may get some overlapping details, such as with the extruded straight segments, but this is very easy to remedy after generation is complete. 
Since everything is completely modular, just select one of the overlapping objects and rotate it however you like. I've also made the choice not to register this operation with Blender's undo system. This is because the generator performs many actions and creates substantial amounts of data, and the undo system just isn't designed to handle that. If you wanted, you could also use the generator to build interior space station scenes, but I must emphasize that it's not been built for this. The way you would do that is to make sure there are holes in the module pieces where they connect together, so there is a seamless interior space that connects all of the modules. For the paid version, I've tried to add a decent amount of variety with the shapes. If I compare the results between the free and the paid version, you can see just how much of a difference there is. I've decided to leave materials out of this version because as soon as you apply a material to geometry, you imply a specific style, and functionality takes precedent over style for this initial version. As for future content, much like the mech generator, I don't have a solid timeline at the moment, but current plans include an extension port system to give modules more surrounding variety, new grid population techniques, larger structure types to occupy multiple cells for things like rotating station rings, and various material assignments to let you add some variety and style to the generator. One thing I should also clear up is the matter of what you can and can't do with this tool commercially. Each of the packages will contain a file explaining the licensing, but I'll briefly explain it here as well because I've been getting too many emails of people asking the same thing. The script is governed by the GPL license because it interfaces with the Blender API, so you're free to do what you want with the code. However, my demonstration artwork is not automatically governed by this license. You are not allowed to download this tool, press generate, export the result, and then try to sell the models on a store like TurboSquid. By doing this, you have not made anything yourself. This is something that anyone could do. The key point here is that you are not allowed to resell my artwork and try and claim it as your own. If the result you created with the generator was comprised entirely of your own artwork, then yes, you are allowed to do whatever you like with it, including selling it wherever you want but that would require you to go through the minimum effort of creating brand new modules for each of the different categories. As for using my artwork as a smaller part of a larger commercial production, where the end user is not directly given access to the objects in their original form, such as with a compiled video game where the model content is an obfuscated resource, then that's completely fine, but make sure you provide me with credit. Most of this is common sense, but I still get a lot of emails from people asking if they can resell the results of my artwork, and the simple answer to that is no. Remember, you can't resell my artwork, but you can resell the results made from your own artwork, and you are free to use my artwork in a commercial video game or movie, provided that the files are compiled and not accessible to the end user in their original form, and you must also provide credit upon doing this. Putting that aside, that's where we're going to leave it for this video, so don't forget to grab a copy of the free resources and maybe pick up the paid version if you want to support my work. I'm really interested in seeing what kinds of cool stuff you can make. You can also follow me on the social media channels to keep up to date, or join our Discord server to get previews of upcoming content. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.